yes, I know you must all be wondering what on earth I'm on about, but I'm actually doing a second shoot. I now shoot Monday nights at the Hartman Mansion, which is obviously a very famous place in Las Vegas. It's absolutely gorgeous. Anytime you get a chance to come down here, you must come down. And it's actually wonderful. So we're doing some Monday night shoots over here, actually, sort of location, I guess you could call it. But we're still at the Pepper Mill. We'll be at the Pepper Mill tomorrow from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock um, with all my guests there as well. So I'm now doubled up with guests, and uh, which is amazing how many people would like to come on the show, and I'm absolutely thrilled. And I have a, a woman, a young woman, that's, that's running for Congress, and uh, her name is Annette Tigero. Did I pronounce that right? That's pretty oh, good. Pretty good. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. I'm learning. I'm learning. I promise I'll learn. And you also speak. I was listening to you. You were speaking um, Mexican or the Latin. I was speaking Spanish. You were speaking yeah. Spanish. Yeah. So do they like it to be called Spanish? Because coming from Europe, my Spanish is from Spain. Right. So, so, the, so we're still Spanish from Mexico. No, no, actually, most of the Spanish that I speak is actually from the Caribbean because my father was Cuban and my mother's Puerto Rican. Oh, so now everybody really wants to confuse me. <laughs> so now we've got Spanish from Cuba. Okay. Yes. Well, that's just like the English, like the English in Canada, the English in Australia, the English in yes. South Africa. So I, I guess it's kind of the same sort of thing. Running for Congress, my goodness yes. gracious me. A woman to do this, you know, I'm, I'm admiring women more and more and more, and I always have done. And because because I've been one out there myself. Exactly. And, and so I know what it's like out there. I know the, 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 there are no struggles unless you create your own struggles as a woman. Women always seem to have what is harder for me because I'm a woman. I disagree with all that stuff. I think if you've got the tenacity, you've got the strength, you know, what, you know where you're going. How does that apply to you? Well, tenacity actually describes me very well. Um, because when things are put in front of you that are obstacles, you have to learn to go over them. And yes. to be able to do that, you have to be tenacious. Yes, yes. So for me, yeah. Um, well, pretty much my parents brought me here 42 years ago. So you were born in Puerto Rico? No, in, I'm sorry, in Cuba. Born, I was actually born in California. Oh, here we go. <laughs> really, really. And then they went over to Cuba? No, my father actually came from Cuba. Oh, he came from Cuba. As a okay. Cuban exile. Um, oh, and then, interesting. Yes, because Castro had taken over and he was already being corrupt. So my father... That was how long? 42 years ago, you said? Oh, my goodness. No, no, it's longer than that. But um, we moved here in 76. Okay. We moved in, to Nevada okay. in 76. But let's see, I was born in California. We lived in Puerto Rico for a few years, then came back to California. Oh, well, someone. Uh, Isn't it beautiful? It is. It's beautiful. Oh, it used to be. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful, but I, I don't think I, I like living there. It's too too congested and. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty island there. Yeah. It's very beautiful. Yeah. So you know, you've you've been, you've lived, and you've done and, uh, a lot through your family, your mum and your dad, and and you've sort of. Um, did you carry anything on through your parents? Were they any? Were they in politics, or did they have? No, not at all. They're, they're no physicians either. <laughs> so, so no, I didn't. Um, not at all. That that wasn't. You know, the calling to enter political life has more to do with public service for me. And and of course, you're a doctor. I am. What are you I'm, practicing? I'm an anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist. Yes. Oh, so you're I the one. You put me to sleep. Do you, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I was supposed to be put to sleep this morning, but I cancelled my appointment. I had to have something done, and they said they were going to put me out. I said, No, you're not. Oh. I'm cancelling the appointment. Oh yeah, I'm very funny like that. I don't like being put out. So. Understand. Yeah, yeah, because I don't, you know, I don't know, what, I don't know what goes on or what they do. Right, <laughs> you become unconscious. Yes, I become. I have. Yeah, they're going to ask me questions, and they, I might answer oh. something. I I want to answer. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm out. <laughs> I'd rather not be out. So, so you went, now was your mother and father a doctor? No. So you are really, I isn't am. that amazing? You are self-made. You are 100% yes. self-made doing everything that you personally want to do yourself. Yes. And pretty much what happened is I was very scholastically, um, uh, I was a high achiever. And I told my parents a long time uh, when I was very, very little that I wanted to be a doctor. And so I was oh. very good in science, very good in math. Uh, and then um, my parents, my grandparents, and my aunt all sacrificed so that I could go to a private school, which was Bishop Gordon. Oh, beautiful. Care. 
Um, I also worked too, and my very first job was translating legal documents from Spanish to English. And of course, you were brought up with two languages, so I you was, were so I you was. so you were now able to sort of use it actually in a very worthwhile place well, of I making money. Well, I think that any time that we can communicate in several languages, it opens up the lines of communication. Absolutely. Well, we're coming from Europe, although I don't really speak, I, I speak a little bit of Arabic, a little bit of French, a little bit of, but I'm, I really don't speak the languages. But um, coming from Europe, we're a little bit more open in our talking with people and everything else. America, I find, is a little bit more closed, a little bit more, they're not so open, you know, to, to, to sort of learning languages or getting into somebody else's space. Oh, I guess you <laughs> Until <laughs> well, I had to get in your space, and I was like, you know, can I have a question ask her? Obviously, I'm always asking questions. So, so what are you exactly? Why did you go into politics of, of something that you didn't see that you like that you'd like to change, or you would like to put something else into the the world of politics? Obviously, that's why you're in because you've got a feeling about something. What is that? So, when I decided to become a doctor, it was to help people, and what I found after being in the practice of medicine was that the government kept kind of coming in and third party payers kept coming in, uh, doing regulatory changes, restricting this, restricting that. And so I found myself over the last 20 years actually defending my patients a lot and defending the practice of medicine so that it's a lot better for them. Yeah. So naturally, after doing that for so long, because for the last 20 years, I have actually reviewed legislation, making sure that it's amended properly, testifying for or against legislation. And you've been testing that and reading yes. about it. And, saying, and doing it. And, and, doing yeah, it. And, and changing things. Yes. So, yes, what, exactly. so what was the first thing that you that really got under your skin you thought, I really want to change this, I really want this to be better, because obviously you're for the people. Mm -hmm. Sounds like that, you're I very am. much for the people. So there was something you first started that, I want to change this, let's see how far I can go and let's see what I can do. What was that? Well, you know, when I was initially asked to be involved more on the medical stuff, what I was asked to get involved with quality assurance. So I've always liked improving the quality of healthcare. So yes. naturally I said, you know, that sounds interesting. I think I'll start doing it. And then I found out that there were certain things that were going on that weren't exactly um, equal. <laughs> where if, if you were perhaps in one group, then you were treated one way, and in another group you were treated in another well, it way. sounds like things have not changed at all. I'm listening to the news right now, and that's exactly, I'm listening to exactly the same thing. This group is here, and this group is here, and God forbid they should meet. I know. So what I ended up doing is I ended up trying to make it better. And uh, then I found that there were things that were going on in Carson City and things that perhaps were going on in Washington, D.C. that impacted my patients. Uh -huh. It wasn't really fair to them because patients wouldn't see the change. Well, they don't see them. the change. They don't know the price increase. They don't know what they need. I mean, I yeah. see so many, I see baskets and baskets of medication that these old, older people, because they don't, they supposedly don't know any better, which they don't. The doctor said, I've got to take all these pills. I know. Baskets of them. I know. And I see them when they come to me. I'm oh, sure. Or, so what do you do? To, do, do, do you, well, I can't, you know. Because you're not a doctor in that way. I'm not a doctor in that way. No. But I do try and explain to them how to simplify some of those things if I see that there's some medications that are not working cohesively together. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I only have them for a small window of time. That's true. So, I mean, most of what I do. <laughs> 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 I explain to them. <laughs> yeah, there's only so much. fast speed. That's right. So, so one of the things that I do as a physician in anesthesia is I actually go through and I call them the night before. Oh, how lovely. So I don't get paid for that, by the way. But I find that if someone is able to ask me the, as many questions as they need to before. the night before, yes. then it makes it a lot easier, easier for them. And does it, it makes it easier for them to take in what you're giving them, the injections, which is whatever you're giving them. It goes in easier because well, we're relaxed. Well, I can tailor it, and I can tailor it better to them yes. because I know what their apprehensions are, what their needs might be. And also, something has to be said about the human voice and touch. Because when I walk in, remember, they've already talked to me on the phone. So they know you. It's so like they know you're a friend. Hey, yes, how are you? It's nice to see you. Which is hey, you nice. again. 
It's kind of nice. So what made you do that service? Because that service was, was years ago. I mean, you had that, that people would do that years and years ago, but in this day and age, nobody really calls anybody the night before. A doctor doesn't really call. Because I already told you I did this to help people. I didn't do See, it See, that's the, the difference. Service. She didn't do it to be a doctor. She no. didn't do it to make the money. She did it because she wanted to help people. That's right. And so now you've, you're helping people in another, another way. Um, I was reading a list of things that um, you might be going into or things you want to attach yourself to. What is the most important thing for you to go to run and to win? Mm -hmm. who, are you, who, are you, who are you up against? Oh my goodness, I have a Republican primary, so I have a long list of people. Oh. You want to hear the long list? Danny Tarkanian, Michelle Mortensen, Scott Hammond, Dave McKeon, Eddie Hamilton. Oh, just uh, a few? Just a few. Just a few because this is an open seat. And when there's an open oh, seat, there's no incumbent to go against, so people get a little bit more bold. Yeah, because there's a seat there That's ready right. to go. It's not, it's not going to open up. It's already open, right? It's already open. It's already there. Yes. There's been a lot of seats like that, haven't there, all over the states? When, when people have retired early. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. A lot of people that have been retiring the last few months, and a seat is open, and someone's trying to jump into yes. that and doing that. And, and but ours is interesting, because actually I'm why? the only one who's qualified to do more than Tell the rest. <laughs> well, well here's, here's the reality. <laughs> the reality none, yeah. none of my opponents in this race have done the 20 years of legislation of advocacy that I've done. So that prepares me to look at things and work with people on both sides, on both of, the sides of the aisle. Exactly. And are you going to work on both sides of the aisle? Because I, I see that the both sides of the aisle, we, we have been very part, and I'm not into politics either side, I'm very neutral. Well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and depending on what it is. Right? <laughs> I'm talking to. No, I'm joking about. But I do see them coming a little bit closer. Not not that close, but they're, they're, they're becoming to sort of, you know, understand, you know. And, and I always feel that there should have been somebody probably in between Barack Obama and Trump, and there should, probably should have been someone to sort of ease if Trump was going to come, come in because he's coming in. I mean, just he's just throwing himself in there and doing good, bad, right or wrong, that's up to the people. Um, he's also going into um, medicine. He's going into the cost of medicine. He's going into an awful lot of this. Does this help you in any way? It depends on what they decide to do. And that's why well, I, I want to be... it's a long procedure. It is a long procedure. Yeah, I think it's a long... It's not going to be something that happened right no, away. It's no, and I think people time. need to understand that it's, it's going to be hard to take out... what was passed in 2010 because although yes. the mandate is gone a lot of the other regulation which not was gone. written yeah. they're not gone no. because those are things that were added on beyond the bill yes and it's hard in government to change things and to get things out of the way yes but ultimately i want to give people a voice there's only 14 physicians in congress that's all out of 535 members only 14 only 14 yep and you're going to be one of the 14. And I'm going first to be 15. <gasps> oh, this is now. This is getting now. I'm going to move. I'm now, <laughs> now I'll stop moving. Now I'll stop moving. Not only would I be the first oh my woman, goodness. but I'd also be the first Latina. The Latina first Latino physician. woman yes. physician coming into politics as of being in the Congress. That's right. Now, also, there's a young lady, is it the CIA or the FBI, the, the woman that's trying to come in to be the head director of it, and she's having rather... Oh, the woman, yes. Yeah, I, I, and I, excuse me, for, I haven't forgotten her name. I didn't remember <laughs> it in the first place, so we don't have to say I forgot it, because I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she's having a bit of a tough time, but they say she's going to get in. First woman. First woman. So were you also being the first woman? The first woman physician in How much backing are you getting with other women? Because, you know, us women are a little bit different. We're strange. We, uh, we, we like to help other women. But at the same time, if we have a new boyfriend, I guarantee the girlfriend will not be around for at least six months for a year because she'll be afraid, because she's afraid that the girlfriend might take the boyfriend. So she makes sure she's got it under lock and key for <laughs> <us. laughs> No, truly, this is what happens. I mean, this is how we are as, as women. So we're very cautious. We're very protective. Are you more open now? 
as, as going into a Congress, as going into politics, as going into the world out there and, and having to say hello to everybody and be nice to everybody. Am I more open? Yes. Boy, I think that, you know, when I was much younger, I was much more shy. Yeah. But there's, you know, I went through the, uh, the age that I actually brought some of my memorabilia when I was Miss Nevada. Let's do that. Here we go. So this actually opened up a whole world. And people sometimes think that, um, Look at that pageants are bad for women, that they're materialistic, but they actually open things up. So, yes, that's what, my, what, that's what my sash. You? Look so at this. So that was in 1980. And you were a teenager. Look at this. Yes. This Nevada teenager. And that, this was my crown. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was, so and this was you. Oh, look at that. That was crown. my crown. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Oh. If you can believe how many heavy, years. Oh, they were heavy. Yeah, now they're that, lighter. Yeah, now they just <laughs> fall off. Now they're lighter, much lighter. So you've got quite a career uh, uh, behind you. Yes. You've got an incredible career ahead of you. How are you exactly. gonna, You're married? I am. I've been married for 27 years. Oh, 27, my lucky number. There you How go. many children? I have three. Oh, my goodness, three. 21. I've really been around that and everything. Yeah. And look, and, and you look absolutely great. You know, oh, this, thank this, you. This, you've got the enthusiasm. Um, what does your husband and your children think of you if you do win this position, you do win this seat? They're ready. Are you they know ready? What? They're ready because 21, they're 18, ready for and 16. <laughs> they're ready for 21, me. 21, 18, and 16. 16. Yes. So they can campaign for you. Yes, they Are can. Are they campaigning? Yes, actually, they're walking right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're walking right they're going to come floating in here. No. <laughs> so do you have to do a lot of campaigning? Do you do Absolutely. a lot of work? Absolutely. And how are you doing so far? Are you, are you on the, are you, where, where are your votes? Was anything happening yet? or? Well, we, no vote's been cast yet, yet. No. but yeah. I do visit constituents, I listen to their concerns, I, I speak to them about how I think, you know, things can be solved, and they're very receptive and very happy. I was going to say, how do they perceive you as a woman taking, uh, the first woman actually, will be taking this seat? How do they perceive that? Do they, are they, I would think a lot of women are excited. Well, I think they're more excited about the fact that they're actually getting someone that's a doctor that can actually carry their voice, um, that can actually speak with some authority, someone who has the 20 years of experience that yeah, I told you about. Yeah, yes. So they're, they're more comfortable, perhaps, with me. With you than somebody else of not Than the politician much. kind of person that's just kind I of... I think a lot of people who, you know, they're, they're kind of fed up with the politics they and all that stuff, you know. I think it's... You know. and, and the bottom paid for Yes. That's the other part, yeah. is people who run for office, they get a lot of funding, yeah. and then they've already sold their votes to somebody else who paid a lot of money. And that's one of the so things the that... money involved. Yes. There's always money that's involved in everything, I guess. So know. when I say, oh, I haven't I haven't taken any special interest money, they're like, oh, then you're my girl. I like you, yeah. <laughs> See, so you've got a lot of points going for you. Yes, I do. Well, I do. So um, let me have to close the interview. What is the number one thing you really, really want to get out there and you really want to do? Well, first of all, I want to be able to represent each and every person. You know, because I think that if you are able to communicate with people mm -hmm. and able to find out what is most important, and these are the things that people are saying, they're concerned about our economy. Yes. They're concerned about the stability yes. of not only our state, but our country. Others, oh, our country and other states, too, that are getting exactly. involved. Exactly. And they're concerned about things like using our military instead of foreign policy. Yes. Because that's very, very scary when you have to always send out the big guns we're not we, we, we've, we've sent them out enough already. I know. We've already done enough and we have that. some very it's wonderful. It's like we're trying people. to avoid what are they exactly. called? A little rocket man. I, I don't know. Little. Oh. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I can joke about it and laugh about it, but it's really quite serious, actually, and I probably shouldn't laugh and joke about it. But it, it just sounds so sort of, you know, um, trying to calm the waters, trying to not have the, the fighting, not have the wars, not have the military, not have everybody involved, but try to talk it out peacefully. Yes. You know, which is 20, we're in 2018. Why can't we do something peacefully and sit and just have a conversation without, exactly. like little boys having a war? Because <laughs> that's what I call it. <laughs> little boys want well, a war. Well, we saw some promising things happening because that's the first time that North and South Korea had actually officially talked. I know. It's amazing. Which is a good in thing. A long, well, I think they, since they parted, which was in the yes. 40s sometime, 40s yes. sometime. Forget this. So those are important. So me. those are the important things. Those too, are very yeah. important because if we create a much more stable environment, and we actually grow our economy properly so yeah. that everybody can prosper. That's I think what we that need. we can yes, yeah. we can export the American way and it becomes the 
Absolutely. Everywhere way. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Lynette is absolutely amazing. Um, let's try to vote her in. How can they get hold of you? If they want to place Well, they, they can go to AnnetteForCongress.com or they can call 702-837-3538. So those are two ways of getting hold of you. Two ways of getting so. hold of you. And also she'll be walking the streets. I mean, literally in Vegas, <laughs> walking the streets. But she's not walking for the streets. And, uh, no. What we think about Vegas, she's walking Knocking on doors. To get her message out there to get what she wants, what she wants to achieve, how she wants to help. Actually, America. That's right. Not only Vegas, America. That's so right. So I think that's wonderful. Thank you very much for coming on. She's amazing. Thank Come you back. for having me. And Thank uh, you. we'll be right back. Vegas Live with Nina. Uh, what was passed in 2010 because although yes. the mandate is gone a lot of the other regulation was gone. written yeah they're not gone no. because those are things that were added on beyond the bill yes and it's hard in government to change things and to get things out of the way yes but ultimately I want to give people a voice there's only 14 physicians in Congress that's all out of 535 members only 14 only 14 yep and you're going to be one of the 14. And I'm going first to be 15. Woman. <gasps> oh, this is now, this is getting first now. Woman. I'm <laughs> now I'll stop moving. Now I'll stop moving. Not only would I be the first oh my woman, goodness. but I'd also be the first Latina. A the Latina first Latina physician. woman yes. physician coming into politics as of being in the Congress. That's right. Now, also, there's a young lady, is it the CIA or the FBI, the, the woman that's trying to come in to be the head director of it, and she's having rather... Oh, the woman, yes. Yeah, I, I, and I, excuse me, for, I haven't forgotten her name. I didn't remember it in the first place, so we don't have to say I forgot it, because I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she's having a bit of a tough time, but they say she's going to get in. First woman. First woman. So were you also being the first woman? The first woman physician. In How much backing are you getting with other women? Because you know, us women are a little bit different. We're strange. We uh, we we like to help other women, but at the same time, if we have a new boyfriend, I guarantee the girlfriend will not be around for at least six months for a year, because she'll be afraid. Because she's afraid that the girlfriend might take the boyfriend. So she makes sure she's got it under lock and key for us. <laughs> she introduces. Uh, no, truly, this is what happens. I mean, this is how we are as as women. So we're very cautious. We're very protective. Are you more open now? As, as going into Congress, as going into politics, as going into the world out there and, and having to say hello to everybody and be nice to everybody. Am I more open? Yes. Boy, I think that, you know, when I was much younger, I was much more shy. Yeah. But there's, you know, I went through the, uh, the age that I actually brought some of my memorabilia when I was Miss Nevada. Let's do that. Here we go. So this actually opened up a whole world. And people sometimes think that, um, Look that at pageants are bad for women, that they're materialistic, but they actually open things up. So yes, that's what, my, what, that, that's what my sash. You? Look so at that this. was in 1980. And you were a teenager. Look at this. Yes. Miss Nevada teenager. And that, this was my crown. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was, so and this was you. Oh, look at that. That was crown. my crown. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Oh. If you can believe how many heavy, years. They? Oh, they were heavy. Yeah, now they're lighter. Yeah, now they just <laughs> fall off. Now they're lighter, much lighter. So you've got quite a career uh, uh, behind you. Yes. You've got an incredible career ahead of you. How exactly. you gonna, you're married. I am. I've been married for 27 years. Oh, 27, my lucky number. There you How go. many children? I have three. Oh, my goodness, three. 21. You've really been around that and everything. Yes. And, look, and, and you look absolutely great. You know, oh, this, thank this, you. This, this, you've got the enthusiasm. Um, what does your husband and your children think of you if you do win this position, you do win this seat? They're ready. Are you they know ready? What? They're ready because 21, They're 18, ready for and 16. You? They're ready for 21, me. 21, 18, and 16. 16. Yes. So they can campaign for you. Yes, they Are can. Are they campaigning? Yes, actually, they're walking right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to come floating in there. No. <laughs> so do you have to do a lot of campaigning? Do you do have a lot of work? And Absolutely. And how are you doing so far? Are you, are you on the, are you, where, where are your votes? Was anything happening yet? or? Well, we, no votes been cast yet. Not yet, no. But no. I do visit constituents. I listen to their concerns. I, I speak to them about how I think, you know, things can be solved. And they're very receptive and very happy. I was going to say, how do they perceive you as a woman taking, uh, the first woman actually, will be taking this seat? How do they perceive that? Do they, are they, I would think a lot of women are excited. Well, I think they're more excited about the fact that they're actually getting someone that's a doctor. 
that can actually carry their voice, um, that can actually speak with some authority, someone who has the 20 years of experience that yeah, I told you about. Yeah, yes. So they're, they're more comfortable perhaps with me. With you than somebody else of not Then the politician much. kind of person that's just kind of. I think a lot of people will, you know, they're, they're kind of fed up with the politics they and all are. that stuff, you know. I think it's. You know. and, and the bottom paid for. Yes. That's the other part yeah. is people who run for office, they get a lot of funding, yeah. and then they've already sold their votes to somebody else who paid a lot of money. And that's one of the so things the that... money involved. Yes. There's always money that's involved in everything, I guess. Yeah. So when I say, oh, I haven't I haven't taken any special interest money, they're like, oh, then you're my girl. I like you, yeah. <laughs> See, so you've got a lot of points going for you. Yes, I do. Well, I do. So um, then we have to close the interview. What is the number one thing you really, really want to get out there and you really want to do? Well, first of all, I want to be able to represent each and every person, you know, because I think that if you are able to communicate with people mm -hmm. and able to find out what is most important, and these are the things that people are saying, they're concerned about our economy. Yes. They're concerned about the stability yes. of not only our state, but our country. Others, oh, our country and other states, too, that are getting exactly. involved. Exactly. And they're concerned about things like using our military instead of foreign policy. Yes. Because that's very, very scary when you have to always send out the big guns. We're not. Yeah, we, we've we've sent them out enough already. I know. We've done enough and we have that. some very it's wonderful. It's like we're trying people. to avoid what are they exactly. called? A little rocket man. I, I don't know, little. Oh, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I can joke about it and laugh about it, but it's really quite serious, actually, and I probably shouldn't laugh and joke about it. But it, it just sounds so sort of, you know, um, ca trying to calm the waters, trying to not have the, the fighting, not have the wars, not have the military, not have everybody involved. But try to talk it out peacefully yes. you know which is in 20 we're in 2018 why can't we do something peacefully and sit and just have a conversation with exactly. that like little boys having a war because <clears throat> that's what I call it <laughs> little boys want well, a war. we saw some promising things happening because that's the first time that North and South Korea had actually officially talked I know it's amazing which is a good in thing. a long well I think they since they parted which was in the yes. 40s sometime 40s yes. sometime Get this. So those are important. So me. those are the important things. Those too, are very yeah. important because if we create a much more stable environment and we actually grow our economy properly so yeah. that everybody can prosper, That's I think what we that need. we can yes, yeah. we can export the American way and it becomes the absolutely. everywhere way. Absolutely. <laughs> well Lynette is absolutely amazing. Um, let's try to vote her in. How can they get hold of you if they want to Well they they can go to AnnetteForCongress.com or they can call 702 837 3538. So those are two ways of getting hold of you. Two ways of getting so. hold of you. And also she'll be walking the streets. I mean, literally in Vegas, <laughs> walking the streets. But she's not walking for the streets and uh, no. what we think about Vegas. She's walking Knocking on doors. To get her message out there to get what she wants, what she wants to achieve, how she wants to help. Actually, America. That's right. Not only Vegas, America. That's so right. I think that's wonderful. Thank you very much for coming on. She's amazing. Thank you for having me. And Thank uh, you. we'll be right back. Vegas Live with Nina.